Hi, how to craft a winning statement of purpose? That is the title of this talk. SOP or statement of purpose, which is really needed if you're applying for a job, for example, or a PhD studentship these days, right? Especially abroad. So what is this statement of purpose is all about? So by the way, this video is, I'm making this video uh, under special, you know, uh, request by uh, one, um, Preeti Kannade, uh, I hope I'm spelling your word correct, Kannade, right? Preeti, thanks a lot for your email. Let me read out her email. I watched a video on how to write a cover letter. It's awesome. I really feel confident about writing cover letters after watching your video. I'm eagerly waiting for the video on SOP writing and uh, she followed up on her earlier request this morning again. So, you know, it gave me motivation to develop this video. So, well, why not? SOP is also extremely important. By the way, if you skip watching that video on how to, you know, how to write winning cover letter, I linked up in the show notes of this video. Please check it out. And uh, a related topic is uh, don't mention these in your CV or resume. There's a, there's a video like that. So, okay. So that link is also in the show notes. So that is, again, that is all about the crux of writing winning resume you know how to make a fantastic curriculum vitae right cv is curriculum vitae that is uh, uh, the you know the, the crux of that video so that is also in the show notes so please check out those two related videos as well so in this video is all about sop by the way statement of purpose is also known as application essay or personal statement depends on where you are applying so all these are just synonyms, personal statement, a statement about myself or a statement that accompanies your application. Well, don't confuse that with a cover letter, just one page cover letter, you know, uh, and that I uh, already covered that topic. So now what is a statement of purpose? What should I put in it? Right. First of all, it should be first person narrative, not third person. If I'm writing, I should use I did this one. Oh, I'm born in here, my family, I, my, you know, first person narrative. That's really important for a statement of purpose. Okay. And uh, it, the statement of purpose should solve at least three major objectives as per my understanding. First one is that you're sufficiently motivated to apply for this position. Whatever position be, for example, a PhD position in a, in a university abroad or here in India or a job position, you know. So are you really motivated to apply for it? That is what you have to really apply that. You have to show your motivation, your inspiration, why you want to take up that position, you know, or even your grant. If you're applying for a grant, why you that grant is really important, you know. So usually SOP is not being asked during the grant application, but, uh, uh, you know, de facto SOP is part of a PhD studentship application as well as application for the job even in private sector you have to actually show your motivation for it you know and it's you know you should actually write something you're genuinely interested in it you know so can reply or a generic statement of purpose for all job very very bad idea so it has to be targeted you have to be intentional when you're applying for any job right you have to actually spend some time crafting a fantastic application you, if you think that just one statement of purpose and one CV, let me just mail out thousands of uh, companies and thousands of professors. I also get lots of emails every day. Uh, some emails salute me, sir slash madam. I hate it, <laughs> that email. You know? They cannot even say my name in the email, a generic canned response. So if you think this kind of responses can land you in job, you're completely mistaken. Every single application should be intentional. You should spend some time refining your application and, you know, make the real cream out of it and show that you're really motivated for that position. You know? So that motivation is really important, the genuine interest, you know, you can also write a little bit of your personal story. I will explain how, how to craft that, that section. Number two is that you are a good fit for the position. It's not that I'm really interested to fly a jumbo jet, but I'm not really, I don't know how to, 
you know, fly a, a, a small aircraft, then how am I fit in it, right? So what is your background? I have to actually explain that I'm a good fit into that profile, the job description of that, you know, or a PhD studentship, whatever the uh, prerequisites, you have to clearly read and understand that whatever is the prerequisite and you fulfill it, all these prerequisites, you know, so that fit, how good you are a fit to that position, you have to explicitly state it. And of course, the third one is that in case you get selected into that position or a PhD studentship, what would be the expected outcome? What you expect that this position is going to uh, be good for you or good for the society. So what you are expecting to achieve in that position is what is the expected outcome. You know, the, so these three sections are really important for any statement of purpose and mind that you have to write it in first person okay so first section is about the motivation that is you know why you and why as a person why are you inspired to apply for this position you know so it's a separate statement of the motivation so that is what you really have to separate all the motivation part into that section usually the first part you have to say that you're really motivated just like in the cover letter, many people don't even read completely. They get thousands of application, you know. So unless you actually state clear cut what your motivation is, they will not even read your the next part, you know. So usually my advice is that you should relate that with some personal story. You know, the stories are immensely powerful uh, to get the attention of anyone, right? The stranger, of course, the company people are just strangers or uh, you know, uh, 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 supervisor, you know, uh, the future supervisor, yeah? prospective PhD advisors are all pure strangers. So, yeah, so use your own story, you know, some kind of a personal anecdote and relate that with the motivation. One good example would be one of my good friend. He had, uh, you know, he had an amputation in his hand because of the snake bite as a young person. Then he tried, he started applying, of course, uh, he completed the master's and then he applied elsewhere and then he applied in a foreign university and he crafted the statement of purpose in such a way that the snake bite was an inspiration for him to choose research on snake, snake venom research. He completed the PhD and then he is now a full professor in that very prestigious university for uh, you know, for the sake of privacy, I'm not revealing the, who the person is, but that is an excellent strategy. You know, relate exactly your personal story with your motivation to apply for that position. And most of the Indian girl student I know are usually first person in their entire family to complete the PhD or master's or whatever be, you know. So if you are one among them, then write it down, write down, uh, you know, uh, just uh, explicitly state it that you are the first person in your family to pursue the PhD. In case you get this PhD position, I will be the first person to complete, you know, uh, that you can just relate that, uh, just explore your entire motivation in that part. But use weighted words, you know, and use only uh, essential elements to that, you know, you need to... Uh, refine it, read, reread, edit it, you know, and cut short it, right? And yeah, so if you are the first person in your entire village to get the PhD degree, write it down. That's a very good uh, personal story. You know, it's it's your inspiration to apply for the position or to get a job. Yeah, you know, not just PhD position, but also for the job, whatever be right. The purpose is for. And also, it's a good practice to relate with a global or a local challenge, you know. So, for that, at least check out the 17 United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals, you know, for the future of Mother Earth. There are 17 goals and you can easily relate your motivation or the, the, the project or the occupation to, to which you're applying to with any of these 70 or more than one of course no problem and you can relate that 
this UN Sustainable Development Goal is your inspiration to apply for this position. Why not? Or if you have any burning local issue, you can relate it that your uh, topic of uh, execution uh, will solve or will at least address some of these local issues that is faced by the masses. For example, the climate change or pollution, whatever it be. Right? You can also mention your influences or role models. You know, we, who are your role model and maybe someone who is uh, really inspired you to apply for this position. Why not? Apply it and state it. You know, for example, Steve Jobs, if you're applying for the Apple position, you know, or it could be books too. You know, so any particular book that immensely, you know, immensely influenced you to try for this position, then say it out. You know, that's also very, very important, right? And now, second part, the second part is all about what makes you an exceptional candidate. So here, you have to be really, uh, you know, speaking about yourself and your merits and how good a fit is, like lock and key to that position. So first of all, you have to read carefully what they are looking for and what are your skill set, which is aligning with what they are looking for and then you have to highlight those skill set you know that's really really important so what are your relevant strength or skills or achievements in those areas what they are looking for so be cautious only relevant don't mention anything irrelevant into it you might have got an excellent ELO rating in chess you know doesn't matter if that just ELO rating is not, not relevant for the position you are applying for. Or you might be a Mensa club member, high IQ group. But Mensa club has nothing to do with if, you know, if Mensa has nothing to do with your position you are applying for, the position in which you are, you tried for, then don't mention it. Those are, those are de de detractions, you know. So those distractions... Uh, will make the company believe that you have nothing else to speak on in your statement of purpose. You are simply boasting your other achievements which are completely irrelevant to uh, the company at all. So don't do that mistake. Okay, only mention the relevant skill set and achievements in your, uh, you know, in in, in your uh, statement of purpose. So of course you're you're smart. You get things done. You know, so that is what you have to you have to show it. You're really smart and you can get things done in that company or in that PhD studentship, you know, uh, to, to do the things done, you need some skills and you have all those skills. You have to highlight those skills. Okay. Have you taken any risks in the past? So if you have taken some risk, whatever be with your past employment or during your master's or PhD or whatever be, so whatever the risk that you have taken, highlight it that you are a risk taker. And were those risk rewarding? Mention it. So uh, all employees looks for the employees uh, who actually takes the calculated risk. And risk, uh, you know, risk taking itself is a, uh, I mean, it's highly creative endeavor. Only extremely creative people will take risk. You know, it's not the status quo. Most of the people simply stick with what they know and they don't want to explore some other field also and also the weakness you know if you faced any failure in the past project mention it but don't simply mention only your failures but also what you learned from those failures you know for example uh, you know uh, you really found to tweak an app or a program uh, for the company in your past employment but you don't know uh, the programming language so you learned from that mistake and you now learn that programming language better equipped to face similar challenges in near future i hope it's clear so that is what you have to mention you know? how did you overcome the failures right and also explain why you will be the best fit to the corporate culture so get some insider view of those culture I'm not saying like the uh, exact position, but still at least whichever the company you're applying for, for example, Google or uh, Amazon, the culture is very well known, you know. So get some ideas how it works. And if they are using certain terms, everyday vocabulary, then use those terms, add those terms in your application statement of purpose. 
you know clearly indicate that you are a good fit uh, in the work culture of the that institute you know so well that might not be that very significant in a phd studentship application but it's it's very important for uh, a private sector job you know and also you have to look up little bit more about the company's work culture do they offer flex time so if then you can speak up about little bit about this flex time if you are a, a new parent how the flex time is going to uh, you know improve your productivity something you can say in case they offer the flex time if they don't offer the flex time that means work from home and don't speak anything about it right and finally you have to mention something about the expected outcome in case you get selected in that dream company how are you going to contribute to their company and you know what what are your visions for uh, the the uh, vision for the company as well as your own productivity for the next one or two years don't speak about like 10 years in time or even 5 years is no i don't think it's that reasonable estimate but at least for the first one year or two year uh, write that you have a clear cut mandate you have a vision you know so what exactly are your goals in that position or in in the phd studentship for example you can mention that uh, you know uh, what what kind of uh, uh, research questions you have in your mind and in which research direction you want to gear your uh, efforts to you know uh, all those things you can mention in your expected outcome so that is why it's really important to mention at least a short term outcome is really important next few months time and long term uh, means basically for one or two year don't go beyond that okay but it should be really specific don't simply beat around the bush or uh, just use a generic statement of purpose that is number one thing you have to avoid never use generic statement of purpose for all the jobs everything you have to craft it in accordance with uh, the company's guideline you read carefully the application guideline or eligibility criterion for the phd and then uh, you have to apply all these tips to craft your statement of purpose into a winning statement of purpose i hope this video helps you and by the way there are so many tips like this in my new book the life skills it is available online it's sold in all countries all throughout the world in amazon and in case you order through the link which i'm going to put in the show notes of this video you're gonna get a lot of discount and plus you will get author signed copy i'm gonna sign the book for you okay so please check out that link in the show notes and i hope this video is useful for you to craft a winning statement of purpose thanks for watching